D. Rowe, break down some of the big offensive performances yesterday. Yeah, Rowe flow. The ball was flying all over the place. Day games. I didn't even have a chance to get settled in for the 7 o'clock games and two guys that already hit three homers. So I want to dive in and give a rip because Mookie Betts yesterday, we've talked a lot about D.D. Gregorius. Capabo, if we can go into it right here at Fenway Park, he put on a display. And I want to get into the fact that not only did he potentially take over the early AL MVP considerations from Didi Gregorius, but then you watch Daddy Wanna Cracker do it at home in progressive field. And I want to rip John Carlos Stanton as well as Nolan Arenado. And I want to talk about, I'm a big, we broke down John Carlo yesterday and we kid around, but we do, we give some great insight on, on, on trying to, what guys are trying to do with the plate, different ways of going about it. I'm a big body awareness guy. I'm a big, you can't cookie cut hitting. Not one way works for everybody. I'm a big believer in the way you've always hit as a kid. If you can get barrel to baseball, you watch Craig Council, guys like that, that break into the league and try all these crazy stances. They don't worry about where their hands are at. They know their hands will eventually get there. And with so many different theories and so many different ways of going about it, it's nice to break down four of the great hitters in the game because they all do it differently. They all get to the point of contact exactly the same, but the way they go about it, the rhythm and timing, their load, how they want to get comfortable in a box is done completely differently. So, be so before we dive into Mookie Betts and how he goes, he's more of the classic case. I want to talk about, I had, I had a guy, I had a, co a coach in the minor leagues, Franklin Ticket Stubbs. He was, a first base co he was a first baseman for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And he always used to say in the low minor leagues when I was in Eugene, Oregon, you want to create rhythm and timing at the plate. So you want to almost sing a song to yourself. So me, 80s glam rock. Mine was Faithfully by Journey. So I would literally be in the box singing Steve Perry in my head. And it would calm me down. 40,000 people going crazy. And I'm sitting here going, Faithfully. So I, want, I wanted to dive in to Mookie Betts. Lock in on this. I don't know what song he's seeing right, uh, singing in his head right now. It ain't that one. But pause it right there. Pause it. What I love about Mookie Betts is he's... A dynamic athlete. He doesn't have to do too much to create whip appeal at the plate. This is your classic case of kind of a little nice little leg kick, weight on the inside half of the knee, kind of a low little. We talk about Josh Donaldson. He talked about creating the rubber band effect. When this knee goes up, my hands are, are loading with it. And if you run it until foot strike, right here, Kapava, pause. I mean, look at look at the rubber band effect. He's walking away from his hands. You listen to a lot of the young hitters now. They're trying to create the rubber band effect. They're trying to walk away from his hands. I heard Eric Cosmer talk about this, 30 clubs, 30 days. You hear Cody Bellinger talk about trying to walk away from his hands. So run it real yesterday because what he was able to do against Danny Duffy was pretty special. All different quadrants. First one was a changeup. When you hit a changeup and pause it before we get Eddie wants a cracker because he went changeup bridge first AB as well. That tells me guys are on time. They're seeing the ball well and they're not cheating to the heater. If you're not cheating to the heater and you throw a, a changeup middle of the plate and you're able to bridge it left center with distance like Mookie Betts and Eddie want, and Eddie Encarnacion were able to do, they're, they're seeing the ball well. A little different way of going about creating rhythm and timing. I always used to be enamored with a guy like David Wright. It didn't seem like he was doing much with his hands. It was almost like he was loading his hips, and his, his hips were a catapult for getting him on time. Very similar when I played with Edwin. I said to myself in Toronto, this guy's an absolute beast. Averaged 39, 40 homers with 100-plus ribbies. He went to Cleveland last year on that big deal, and I was like, eh, it was, was kind of quiet. For what I know Eddie can be, I looked down at the stats. He hit 37 and drove in north of 100. Not that quiet. He just didn't get going as quick as possible. Pretty much similar to this year, hitting still sub 200, but huge three homer game yesterday. Starts his hands a little bit lower, kind of chest high. And what he does is just creates rhythm and timing with a little rocking mechanism. Run it, Capalbo. Little rocking mechanism, and he creates the rubber band. Pause. And he gets what I love, and you'll hear me talk about this a lot, 
three years. Rudy Jaramillo always wanted to create, like, I would toe tap. John Carlos next on the tape. We'll get into that. Weight on the inside of your back knee. I almost wanted my, my back knee, the inside of my back knee to ache when I was done playing the game. He used to say, I should be able to take a piece of rebar through your ear, through the inside of your back knee, into the ground, and there should never be any waiver. The knee should never get beyond the foot or you're off balance. Everything should be stacked on the inside of this back knee. No one does it better in the game than Eddie. He creates a little rhythm, run at Capavo. He creates a little rhythm with his hands, gets in perfect hitting position. What I love about Eddie, too, a little different than what I, what I used to do, he creates perfect launch angle. It doesn't look like he's really has a lot of play, like tack hammer play with his top hand. It's more along for the ride, creating that whip appeal. Let's go into John Carlo last night. We talked about yesterday, the lower half going towards right center and the upper half going towards, going towards left center. You see the beast Gary Sanchez timing him up as well. But everything synced there. I still think he can get a little bit better, but there was perfect example of Dallas Keuchel throwing a little breaking ball and John Carlo thinking, right center, right center, right center, right center. Let me stay there. Boom! And just walking the dog on this pitch. And just letting it eat and putting it in the Crawford boxes. He does it a little bit. Re-rack this real quick because his timing mechanism is a toe tap. So take it back all the way to the beginning if we can, Kapal, because I want to show people. It's a little, it's a little jab step. A little toe tap. That's something I used to do. And the only reason he's doing that, in my opinion, the only reason he's doing it or why I did it was to feel the weight transfer to the inside of your back knee. Once you feel that, you know you're on time. If my head doesn't move, my hands are getting there, period. And he's one of the best in the business. By the way, he's going to walk into 40 homers in Yankee Stadium. But this guy, this is unbelievable. You want to talk about dancing at home plate? He's listening to a salsa. There's no journey happening right here. This is Wrigley Field. Run the tape. I don't even know. I mean, we got right, left there. Then we went left. Give it to me again. Right. Give me a toe tap. And perfect hair and everything is on. I mean, he is feeling it right now. That's a little different. But it's, again, the guys like Paul Molitor, the guys that sat, sat stagnant, and could just hit from this position and go for that mind blowing to me. I don't think you can teach that. The kids at home, I, my son plays eight, you travel. We're all in on it. Everyone approaches hitting differently from that age to the big leaguers. I don't think you can cook cookie cut it, but it's all about creating rhythm and timing. I just gave you four ways of going about it. The classic Eddie want a cracker more the hip rotation. Then you see Giancarlo, more of a toe tap to the inside of the back knee, and then creating rhythm and time, and with just a little dance step. There's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. Row flow. I don't know. Yeah. I can't, I'm out of breath, dude. Yeah, that's good. You, was it ever a little awkward you, when you were singing faithfully and you would well, slow, you slow out, dance with the umpire? You didn't actually hear it. You oh. didn't, I didn't actually sing it, but I was thinking it. That's a good song. Highway run.